Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. On this episode, high energy drummer for award winning Christian rock band Newsboys, Duncan Phillips. And now, Rich Redman. What is up, everyone? Rich Redman here. Hey, this is another exciting episode of the Rich Redman Show coming to you l- live <laughs> in real time. That's for you, Courtney, uh, from <laughs> Nippers Corner, Nippers Corner, America. And as always, I'm joined by my co-host, co-producer, Jim McCarthy. How you doing, pal? I know. Can you tell who I am? Dude, you're always branded. I am. But we like the same colors, white, Black, red, gray, very masculine colors. Goes together. So we were talking, I'm so excited to have our next guest because Duncan Phillips is an an Australian-American keyboard player, composer, songwriter, but mostly known as the drummer for the Grammy Award-winning platinum-selling contemporary Christian group Newsboys. Thank you for coming, man. <laughs> it's so nice to have you, man. Thank you for this audience, too. I really appreciate <laughs> Look this at audience. That, man. That's incredible. Thank you. Yeah, man. It's so great to have you here. I remember running into you in the Nashville airport. You That's were catching right. a flight. I was catching a flight. Right. This is maybe like a good four years ago. Yeah. And we took a picture together. You posted it on your page. I got 600 new followers oh, immediately. That's awesome. Because so much fun. I'm assuming that the, the, the fans that have been following you guys... Um, since not only 1993, but the, the band formed in 1985, correct? Dude. They're rabid. We, wow. we were we were kids and uh, we were, I mean, I'm, I met some of the guys, I was 18, 19 years old, and uh, we started old school. We started in a garage. Yeah. We started in uh, my good friend Peter's garage and uh, we had people, uh, the neighbors hated us, Rich, yeah. because we were making so much noise. But uh, <laughs> out of that, but we had this massive kind of dream in our hearts and the big dream was to come to America because yeah. we thought well we could get big in Australia but who cares right kind of right, right, right. Um, no just to Aussies we love Aussie but uh, we thought man if we got big in America we'd be big everywhere right? yeah. so we packed our bags at a very early age and we came on over and uh and it was it was it was exciting, but it was really tough because we had no kind of support system there. We we came from the other side, of it, we didn't know anyone, so we couldn't go, you know, crash at someone's mum's house. We that just wasn't there. There right. wasn't. So we um, we had some days where they were really tough, tough toes. But we were teenagers, so we didn't care. You know, it means so you you had this big dream in your heart, and uh, the other option was to go home with the tail between our legs. But that just wasn't an option for us. We just said we have got to do this. We have got to make it. Right. So that was nineteen eighty five. Yeah, and it was Nashville was the first city. You know what we uh, we had a few cities. I think we stayed in Atlanta for a, a, for a few, few months, but we really kind of full time came over here like ninety ninety one. Right. We, we kind of we the band uh, initially started eighty five in uh, in Australia. We toured around Australia and had had a, had a ton of fun. But we came over probably eighty seven eighty eight was the first year. But we only come over for a certain amount of time. It was ninety one. We decided you know what we're gonna we're gonna go over to the states and stay. Yeah, and when you have this, this is essentially it's a subset of the recording industry where you have bands like uh, Audio Adrenaline and Sonic Flood and uh, DC Talk. Uh, I mean, you guys uh, led the charge, right? Well, we were one of them. Um, I mean, I remember meeting Michael, who's in our band now. Uh, he was with DC Talk back in 90, I think it was. And wow. we actually, funny thing, Rich, Small, it's a small world, but we actually toured with DC Talk. Right, it was called the New School Jam, and we toured DC. They were just starting; we were just starting, and that was like nineteen ninety one. I think we toured with them, so we kind of got to know the DC Talk guys from there. And then uh, it was like eleven years ago. That's when we, and I'm probably preempting your next question, but that's when we asked Michael to can be part of their band because you've had three different frontmen. Yes, yeah, three. Uh, the, uh, the, some of the original guys. Um, it's really tough. Um, some of the original guys in the band we first came out of, they were only with us for about 18 months because they, it wasn't what they thought it was going to be. They thought they were going to come to America, make tons of money, get super famous, and they thought it was going to happen within the first Overnight. Four months. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And it, as you know, it just doesn't happen like that. And you survived all these changes, yeah. and you've evolved and adapted, and yeah. you've been back there behind the drums. What's so great about us, with us drummers, we get to take in this big picture, yeah. and it's such an interesting position because we have to lead and drive at the same time, we follow. Yeah. We're kind of like armchair philosophers. We're yeah. psychiatrists, but then we're the 
the band's trainer and yeah. emotional yeah. support. <laughs> I mean, I mean, those lead singers need help. You know what I'm saying? Right? We're, we're, the, we're, we're there for all of it. I know, right? So, what at right? what, age, what age did you start playing the drums, and who were your big heroes? Yeah, um, I was nine years old. I was in elementary school, and uh, we actually I show my age, but we actually used to have assembly, and then we'd we'd kind of march into school. Right? Yeah. It mm-hmm. was kind of what we did um, back in Aussie back in the day, and uh, I thought it'd be way cooler. To, and we had a drum corps. That that did you do that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah. And I thought that'd be way cool to do that than actually be one of the you know marching to school. So I thought, man, I'm I'm I'm, I'm a bit. But you know, traditional style, you know, kettle, you know, the whole whole the nine marching. Oh, do yeah. you still oh, play yeah. that a little? I don't. Oh, yeah, I yeah. don't. I, yeah, I never learned it. I, I I started playing drums in '76, and my teacher was a match grip player, so I yeah, never yeah. I never learned it. It hasn't held me uh, held me back. What's funny? No, of course not. Uh, I uh, I learned traditional, and then I played traditional for a while, but then. For some reason, I thought match grip looked way cooler. Yeah, you know, because you know, the, uh, right? All of, way you, up you know, there. doing all the stuff and as we do, but and and I thought, well, gosh, how can I, you know? So anyway, so um, yeah, so master in school, and then at nine years old, I, I thought, man, mama, I, you know, I want to learn drums, so I did. And um, my drum teacher, uh, Rich, was incredibly encouraging. He said, man. You got something here, you, and he actually told my mum. Said, "Man, you, your son is his. He's got he's incredible. Got it. T- yeah, he's got incredible time. You need to. Yes, he, you need to. You know. And that was at nine years old. And that's so. that's what defines us as drummers. First and foremost, is can we get through three and a half minutes and keep the same tempo? Well, see, that's the thing. I, I yeah. think <laughs> I, I think Rich, and I'm I'm off on a tangent here, but I see so many guys on on Instagram, and they learn and they gather these chops and they and and, and there's all, all over the place. Yeah. I'm thinking, well, that's cool. Yeah. But that's not going to get you the gig. You know no. what gets you the gig? If you can lay it down for three and a half minutes yeah. and 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 groove for that three and a half, that's what's going to get you. And gig. maybe be good, cool, look cool doing it, which well, you do. Well, that's my opinion. <laughs> uh, Rich, <laughs> when totally you, my when opinion. did you start the spinning? The, the, the spinning? You know what? Yeah. Uh, we were, back in the day, we were, we played a lot of these big festivals and they have all these big headliners like are they like, Christian music oh yeah artists? Okay. oh yeah huge yeah, yeah. Yeah, these you know 30 40 60 thousand people festivals over the summer and and uh, there was um, Michael W. Smith Amy Grant all these massive artists and they had these killer songs right at that time we didn't have any songs so we thought how can we set ourselves apart what can we do right. to to have people remember us Mm-hmm. Spin the drums. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's do I it. I mean, a lot of people have that idea, but as far as like uh, actually committing to something like that and the was, technology and moving that thing well, around, there was not, I mean, we we designed the whole thing, we built the whole thing, we engineered the whole thing. Obviously, we had engineers that would come in, but our manager Wes Campbell, he is um, he's a visionary, and he he's very mechanical. Right. So it was Wes and Steve, our production manager. Uh, kind of got together myself, and we thought, well, how, can we, how let's do this? How, how we, let's figure it out? So we did. There, you know, it's not like you can go to Home Depot and buy these parts off the shelf, Rich. You, you know, you, make it. you've got to make it. You've right. got to design it, engineer it, make it, right. and then you've got to. Okay, well, now we've done this. How are we going to actually implement it? So it was so much fun, and uh, here today, I think we're at the, at the third version of the of the spinning drum riser. But um, it's one of those things that kind of people know. Oh, newsboys spinning drums. You know, like blink blink one eighty two a right. little bit. You know, um, they they have this. I think Slipknot. I think they and I think of course um, our mate. Um, oh, Tommy Lee. Tommy Lee. Yeah, uh, they have versions of, of these kind of spinning drums, and it's kind of a nice moment for the fans to give a break from music and and. Um, oh, people like to be entertained with their eyes. Well, they, of course they do. But who, how many bands actually get? a drum kit and throw it up in the air and spin it. Not many, right? Mm-hmm. And so, are you strapped in for just that portion of the show? How does that work? I can't tell you. That, okay, right? that's a trade secret. <laughs> so Jim texted me and he says, "What's the insurance markup when you oh, do yeah, that?" Oh yeah, I know, I know. I, yeah, is I, that for I, the promoter or is that for the who does who takes care of that? We insure okay. ourselves. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's You're highly just, insured. Uh, highly insured. I'm I, my, my booty is highly insured. <laughs> I love that. 
pre- premium markup. Uh, premium point. markup. On, it's, it's a premium booty right here. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's really funny is, is that when I was talking about, I got those six, 600, 400 new followers when you posted that picture of us. It's because your fans are so rabid and then you are actually, you know, you're a full-fledged member. You are a newsboy. You know, oh, yeah. I've, I've made a career, you know, bringing other people's music to yeah. life and playing yeah. sessions. Which and that is kind awesome. Of, but, Which is awesome. But, you know, people follow you, you know, rabidly. And how, what is that like? I've been in the same band with the same guys for 20 years. So we're talking like, you know, five presidencies and we finish each other's sentences. Yeah. I can imagine it's the same thing. I mean, do you guys socialize outside? I yeah. mean, your, your brother's thick and through. You know what? It's, it's like you're in this team. Right. And it's very similar to being in an NBA team or the military almost because you're gone so much. You, you go through the trenches with these guys. So I think, you know, initially, you know, when you're teenagers and young 20s, obviously you have your confrontations over stupid. It's always over stupid stuff, Rich. Mm-hmm. Um, but as you get older and you live some life, now I can look back. Uh, you know, because I've got the best seat in the house. Yeah. That, that's definitely my opinion. I'm looking, I, I, yeah, I get to watch my band every night. But what it is, it's, it's the love you have for your, bro- for your brothers. Right. You, know, you look down and just like, yeah, dude, that's my guy. And I've, I, I know that guy. I know, I know what he's thinking right now. I, yeah. You know what I'm saying? All of that kind of stuff. And that brings this kind of, this spirit of this, this team as one, because we're, we're, we're we're greater together than we are separately. Yeah. I think that, just in general. That unspoken commitment to each other. That's exactly what it is. And yeah. we do. We socialize away from the band. Although when I come home, I really try to spend as much time with my family as I can. Because that's, yeah, that fall, if that falls apart, you know, everything else kind of would tend to too. So yes. for me, it's very important to spend as much family time. But yeah, we'll go out and do movies and we'll have parties and go, you know, do this stuff, especially coming up to. You know, holiday season. Well, you yeah. probably all got to see e- each other's firsts, your marriages, your birth of your children. And, Absolutely. We yeah. held each other's kids, you yeah. know, so it's 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 cool. That's really incredible. Yeah. And, you know, when we were talking about you starting to play the drums at age nine, yeah. it makes me yeah. think about um, <clears throat> our sponsor on the show here. It's a group called School of Rock. Yeah. Now, this is a yeah. great organization, yeah. and there's 250 locations awesome. around the world, awesome. and there's 80,000 kids that sign up, and they learn to sing. They learn to play drums, bass, guitar guitar, keyboards. Jim, I'm always talking to you about how I'm a product of music education and how music education is so useful for kids. And we had our friends Angie and Kelly McCright on the show. So they're sponsoring our show. Thank you, Angie and Kelly McCright. And they have two locations here in Nashville, School of Rock Franklin, School of Rock Nashville. And if your kids are interested in signing up for this, they can just email franklin at school or nashville at school and i'm very involved i do clinics for them i pop by i teach the kids and they've got a big event coming up at the ryman auditorium it's a big fundraiser on january 5th and i'll be your host and mc for that event so we love school of rock we love music education and they're a big part of the nashville community so check out school of rock.com not bad. Okay. No, that was and really good. That was really good, Rich. Back to the show. <laughs> that was really good. And back to the show. So we were talking about, you know, um, you know, aging and surviving these seasons of our life. And yeah. I got to say, you look fantastic, man. I look fantastic for 75, right? Do you do? Do you do? I mean, and you always, I'm always, yeah, look Rich. at that. Look at a gun. Isn't that amazing? That's <laughs> incredible. That is incredible. And he's you know cool about it. Hey, if, if I had those, I would show them off constantly. Well, exactly, as you do. Yeah. You know what, Rich? I think as drummers, we got to think more like athletes. We are athletes. Than the classic rock and roller that stays up till three. Wait, hang on. I'll do that. Um, that, you know, that kind of abuses our bodies through, you know, not looking after it. And, yeah. and uh, it's just not the case. Uh, I think sometimes I look at, you know, what people portray on their videos is like, yeah, I'm in the club, I'm partying, I'm doing this. But for those guys to look as good as they do, they're not up. They're not up partying and all night. Right. They got. They got a dietitian. They sure work they out do. every day. They drink lots of water. They get tons of sleep because you know what it's like. You get. You get no sleep. You. You can't perform. 
No, no, it's 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 you know for me, I I know the things that I could do to have the balance in life. So I drink tons of water. Yeah, I absolutely I take tons of vitamins. I get acupuncture. I treat myself to massages. I do. Um, I like boot camp style. Um, yeah. at workout. Yeah. So I do Orange Theory. I do Barry's boot camp. Great to have a cross train for drumming because yeah. drumming, obviously, any any kind of exercise is is kind of one thing. But if you can cross train it with something else and get that cardio, for me, it's all about cardio. I. But you look like you do traditional Monday, Wednesday, Friday, back and by chest and try. I mean, you have that kind of body. Well, well, you know what, Rich? People say, oh, what do you what do you bench? What do you lift? I don't lift weights. Really? I'm not a weight guy. Uh, I don't want to, well, Rich, uh, you can test this. I don't want to get bigger where I can would, would restrict right. a flexibility. Uh, for me, it's all about being long and lean. Right. Uh, as drummers, we want to be, uh, you still want to look good, of course. You still yeah. want to have shape and have good muscle tone. But I think what I do is I, as you said, lots of water, eat, eat impeccably well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important. Get tons of sleep, which is so important for us. And, um, and uh, you know, there's some other things – you know, I, I take a pre, I, I put like a pre workout before, before I, you play. Yeah. Oh, absolutely! And so when you say yeah. eat super clean, so we're talking like uh, um, bodybuilder slash paleo inspired. Absolutely, um, absolutely. And with your rider on the road, yeah. I'm assuming uh, with you know you guys being looking as good as you guys do, you guys look great, and you're in your early fifties, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I'm, I'm right around the corner. Yeah. Um, we're, so we're talking. Egg whites in the morning, chicken breast and broccoli for lunch. Not quite that, but it's, it's yes, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I mean, really clean proteins, right. lots of salad. Uh, not you got to careful of the fruit, and certain fruits are really sugary. So, yes. but I, I do eat, I do eat the vacation fruit. fruits. I call them the mangoes and the papayas. Yes, yes, you, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, right. well, I'm not saying you can't, but, yeah. but, but not regularly. So, you know, for the morning, I'll, you know, for me on the road, especially, I get up at the crack of noon mm -hmm. um, because there's no point in me getting up any, any earlier than that. It's just no. Because there's nothing for me on to the do. road. So why? Yeah. yeah. So just sleep. So get you get rest. as much rest as you possibly can. Yeah. Get up and learn. So then I'll I'll eat like a like usually some kind of protein on salad. Mm -hmm. um, I'll I'll drink, you know, a ton of water before that. I'll wait, let that settle. Eat eat my salad. Then I might have like mid mid afternoon kind of a handful of mixed nuts. Mm -hmm. Nice. Marrows, yeah. Just to get that protein. Then dinner time's like a really high protein mm -hmm. something. You know, you just got to stay away from the carbs because they're just right. we don't need them. Uh, well, so when you're, when you're, you, I mean, you're talking especially like white rice, flour tortillas, bread. I don't eat any of that. Right. No. Just gave it all up. Yep. Yep. We don't need it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're just true. Yeah. I just miss the bread sometimes. I know. Look, I love pasta. I love bread. I love certain, I love carrot cake. No, yeah, that's a good one. Carrot cake is my jam, right? Yeah. So <laughs> about once every six months, I'll have a little. little six little. months? Oh, yeah. Gosh. So oh, you yeah. don't do a cheat day once a week. You do. No. You, wow. No. So really, so say like you're in. So you're in Little Italy. Yeah. Yep. No. You get the no. salad and the yep. and, and then what's and then what's your thoughts on you no know, red wine or nothing or like? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. Uh, look, look. I, uh, personally, I'm not a red wine guy because yeah. red wine gives me massive headaches. I don't know what it is. Um, I, I like it. Yeah. But um, I, I don't know. Yeah. The sulfates in the red wine. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and people that drink it, I think that they can drink it. Great. More power to you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm more of a. a you know, I'm more of a vodka guy. You know, yeah, so no, it's nice and clear. It's and nice and clear and clean, and you're not drinking. Okay. Beer, beer's the worst. I mean, yeah. beer it really is. Bread. It's like, it's just, yeah, right. It's yeah. bloaty, it's farty, it's it's it's, it's, it's everything. all those so, things. So if I'm going to have a drink, uh, you know, I'll have some kind of, you know, vodka and soda. Or yeah, so that's a good one. That's yeah. the one I, I call the skinny the skinny well, girl. Well, well yeah. it, it is, it, it is skinny because girl if you want to have a, just have a quiet drink at night at home and, and with your wife and, and uh, you know, but these guys are pound six beers every night. I'm like, what are you doing? How do you do just, that? Well, I don't know how they do it because yeah. I, I can't. Sure. Well, you know, what's really interesting is that there's, um, I have a new friend, Dr. Nadia Azar, and she is a researcher at the University of Windsor. Okay. And she comes across the border and to the, I don't know if you guys ever play the uh, Detroit market, but the Michigan market, but she's been doing a scientific study mm. on the caloric burn of drummers. So she came to my show and she oh, yeah. hooked up me with all the electrodes. <gasps> That's so much fun. And so I'll get you guys connected. Would she, that'd be, I would love to oh, so, so I'd I, love to know. With our music, which is a lot of tempos around, you know, 85, to 95 BPM so, kind of slow so and slow. fat yeah um I burn over a thousand calories oh, yeah. in ninety yeah. minutes so you guys got some up tempo stuff so yeah. you probably might be up there like 1500 calories I, I'd say probably 
uh, 2000 probably, maybe yeah oh, I don't know 2000 that's a lot but 1500 maybe probably, something probably like 1200 that. 1500 mm-hmm. I'm, I'm guessing and and I'm and she said that my heart like when I always get my physical they're like your blood pressure is perfect yeah. you have the heart rate of a young athlete yeah. I'm like how did this work yeah. out this yeah. is great so drummers are athletes Look, absolutely. And I think we've got to think like that. Mm-hmm. I think when you're in your twenties and you're all about the rock and roll, and yeah. then you, you, you don't. But I think as we as we mature a little, I think, look, there's so many people think, oh, I'm 40 now, I can't do what I used to do. I don't believe that. Right. I think you can do what you used sure. to do. You just got to be more intentional. Uh, very intentional and methodical about yeah. everything you're putting in your face yeah. and 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 because uh, it matters, you know, in your forties it matters, in your twenties right. it doesn't seem to matter. It does. I know because I'm going to be fifty in six months. Congratulations! Yeah, so I mean, it's going to you made it. It'll be a big party. You made. Oh. You made it. Yeah. Hey, can I That's come? That's a way to look at it. Of course you can come. I need to be there. Rich. That would be really, really great. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? Now, you guys are touring incessantly. You've been touring all these years. Yeah. You've been with the band 26 years. Yeah. I looked on the website. The tour is going. It's right now is into July of 2020. Already, yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. I mean, that's... Uh, we never stop, Rich. And you know what? I love it. Is it Weekend Warrior style? Pretty much. Okay. Yeah. That's great. We do West Coast run. We'll go out to West Coast for a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. We won't come back for a couple of weeks. But that's, you know, that's once or twice a year. Mm-hmm. Um, summertime, there's festivals, state fairs, county fairs. We do a ton of that stuff over the summertime. So you're flying here, flying there. So that's... Even though it's not as many shows, it's... it's uh, the travel days, Dude. they magic. Because we used to do over 200 shows a year, and now we're at a point on year, and year 15 of nonstop touring that we are doing... So Sixty shows a year, but That's then, it. but you know, but it, you know, Nashville is so central, and and yeah. pe- pe- the people and my yeah. friends that are in New York yeah. and LA, when I tell them how we tour, and I'm like, look, it, we'll leave on a Wednesday, and I'll mm-hmm. come back on a Sunday, mm-hmm. and I still have seventy two hours a week to like spend time with friends, Absolutely. and write songs, yeah. or do drum tracks at my yeah. studio here. Yeah. I have that time to myself, yeah. and it makes a big difference, I'm sure, in maintaining a relationship, seeing your kids, it all that kind of stuff. Keeps you sane, man. Yeah. It keeps you kind of grounded. I think these tours, like back in the day, we'd go out for three months at a time and that's soul destroying yeah you just you become a kind of a i kind of really hollowed out kind i don't of, know what i would do with the time off okay be like okay you guys have 72 hours in des moines iowa off oh, no what are you gonna do you fly You're, home that's what yeah. you do yeah, yeah. <laughs> aside, aside from eating a bullet <laughs> exactly <laughs> even on your own dime i would you you know kind of get home so um jim you were um you were curious about the film god's not dead yeah 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 you know the um, my kids really got into it and they stayed would just bellow it all the time around the house yeah and, uh, yeah. It was really cool to listen to, but I mean, that was that kind of a defining moment for you guys. I mean, it was one uh, of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was like you know, as any career, you have these defining moments where you can feel the impact of of a song or or in that, this case, a movie. We wrote this actually. Uh, gosh, it was Daniel Bastia. He's the guy that wrote the song, and he recorded the song, and um, I think. Crowder recorded the song too, mm-hmm. but it was it was different. Mm-hmm. Uh, we saw the song. I, I remember first hearing the song, thinking, "Nah, nah, guys, nah, you've lost your mind. There's no way we're recording this song. It's I, I was I wasn't feeling it." Right. Um, but our manager said, "No, nah, there's something here. There's something here." Mm-hmm. So we recorded the song. We newsboys derived it, and uh, it arguably became probably one of the biggest songs that, that we've ever tracked. It's like an anthem. It really is. And I think what happened was we recorded, the, the song came out and then uh, a company called Purefix came to us and said, look, we're writing a movie, but we love this song. We love the title of the song. We'd love you to be in this movie. That's great. So I remember Rich, <laughs> typical <laughs> musicians, right? We get to, we, we they'd sent us our script a month early. We were on tour, Rich. We were out, we were in a different headspace. Yeah. You know, we were rocking arenas all over the country. So we were like, yeah, all right. Movie, we thought people are going to have a couple of dinky cameras. We'll gonna believe be, it when it's we gonna see It's going to be hokey, yeah, right? Yeah. So no one had learned their lines. So I remember we got up at like, call was 7 a.m., which was for us was like, oh, it was death, right? So we got up at 7. I remember walking out the bus, walking out and seeing a Hollywood movie set. And I remember thinking, oh. How many lines did you guys have? I got to oh, watch the we, film. We, we had a few. Yeah. We, we had enough to where... You could get your SAG card if you want. Did uh, you get it? Oh yeah, nice. <laughs> SAG member. Yeah. yeah, you know it. Um, absolutely. I get get my uh, get my uh, screeners five, five dollar checks yes. um, in the mail. It's awesome. <laughs> <Five dollars. laughs> nice. Well, you know, over time they. Right. they but get that's it. a cool yeah. thing to be an actor in the film and then play it on the soundtrack and. Well, it, it's 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 really it's really wonderful and and. Um, 
So, you know, I'm, I went back to the bus and I said, guys, learn your lines, learn your lines. This is this is a real movie. This is a real deal. So, I mean, it was that bad. So we got out. I mean, we crammed our lines and we got through that day anyway because I remember we, we actually recorded all our parts actually in our dressing room that was for the show that night. Yeah. So they recorded and the show. And then they filmed the show. We filmed the show. Right. I remember for a lot of the, excuse me, a lot of the close shots, um, there was, uh, we ran through the song before the show, I think, a couple of times to get the really close shots, yeah. you know, of the actors. Right. And then we recorded the show, but then we even ran through those songs during the show a couple of times just so they could, they had cameras everywhere, but just so they could get what they needed. I so, am going to watch the film because it's Kevin Sorbo. I mean, it's a good, it's Kevin, cool. Yeah. Kevin Sorbo, uh, he was Hercules. He man. was Hercules. Dude, yeah. super cool guy. Yeah. Super chill guy. Um, I think he, one, my, one, one of my acting coaches uh, is, it could just cast him in a new movie. You, you know what? He's a good dude, yeah. man. And, and um, you never know with people when you, when you, when you meet them. Yeah. But he was, he, he'd, he'd be a guy I'd love to sit down and just pick his brain. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, because I think he would just open up and just, just, he was, he's cool, man. Ask him about Xena, the warrior exactly. princess. <laughs> exactly. Well, exactly. Right. What, happened to, what happened to her? I'd like to see what her. Uh, I know, I she know, was right? on uh, Parks I, and Rec. Is, is she, what? She was on Parks and Rec. Uh, and Lucy Lawless. Lucy, that's right. That's that's right. Wait a minute. That's she was right. on Parks and Rec in the early seasons? Because I've been watching those. Uh, maybe, maybe it was the later seasons. It was the later seasons. She played uh, uh, Ron Swanson's love interest. Was she a com comedic actress doing the a comedy? A little bit. Okay, a yeah. Kind of dry. Well, yeah. you know, it, 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 what... Uh, the whole contemporary Christian market, it's so interesting to me because I've been here in Nashville since 1997. Yeah. And I actually toured with Susan Ashton, <gasps> who was a Dove Award winning yeah, artist. She sure was. Did you play drums for her? I played drums for her when she was trying to go after her um, country pop yes. career. So um, Garth Brooks's manager was managing her. And we went and we did the Donnie and Marie show yep. and we did um, Austin City Limits. Great gal. I haven't spoken yeah. to her in a, in a long time, but that's as close as I have gotten to the industry. And then I have a friend, Steve Brewster, that plays on a lot of contemporary Steve Christian Brewster. writers. Steve Brewster. What a monster. And Greg Harrington. Yeah, Greg, Greg. Greg Harrington. Monster drummer. Yeah, great um, players. And it's, it's, I just feel like I don't run into anyone in the industry like you guys are all hiding out somewhere. <laughs> it's, a, it's the funniest thing, even though we all live in Nashville, and I've talked about this before, is there's... You know, a little bit of pop. There's the country music scene. There's a Christian music scene. And I have no idea, Rich, why we don't spend more time with each yeah. other. Because it's a very similar fan base. Sure. Um, I think we're all so busy. I mean, I don't necessarily hang around when I get home anyway in town. I don't really hang around anyone else other than my band and my family. Right. So, But it's not on purpose. Yeah. It's not that I don't want to. It's just that for some reason I don't. Yeah. You know, so you know it, Tony Mora? He's like a contemporary Christian, does a plays a lot of records from Dude, his home studio. I do. And he was one of the first cats to say, I'm going to take this garage, yep. convert it into a full fledged professional recording studio. I'm going to have my drums all mic'd up at any time, ready to go. Yeah. And he still does that all the time, plays on tons of CCM records. Crazy. You, you know what? I, I on purpose decide, I think that's awesome. I love that. I, when I come home, I really want to unwind because we do hundreds. We still do 100, 120 shows That's a year. A so for me to come home and do sessions is like, ah, uh, yeah. yeah. But you're set up in your space. I got, I got my space. That's great. Absolutely. Just, just like, yeah. just like the space here. I got my space, and for me, it's more of a rehearsal space where you know, before a tour, before we go into band rehearsals, before a tour, I'll go in there and I'll, I'll. I'll, ma shed. I'll make sure yes yeah. and that's still a thing for me sure you know preparing I, I, for the tour absolutely because especially if you're doing new songs I want to make sure that when I get it in the space with the rest of the guys I don't want to be the weak link right you know I, and, I, and I charted I know you, you're a, you're a charting fiend yeah um uh, I don't understand your charts. <laughs> I've seen that your post your. <laughs> I've seen your post your charts on that. Like, I what no is I, that? I don't. I can't follow you that, Rich. Yeah. I'm sorry, dude. But I, I, I learned. You know, as a, as a, as a kid, I learned how to write, read, and write drum music. So great. I'm a little bit more traditional. Mm -hmm. In the way, so I'll you know what I'll do is I'll I'll chart out the first measure and then I'll you know do the you know the little 
screwed in the tights, repeat, yeah. repeat, 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 and then I'll get a drum fill. I'll, I'll chart the drum fill out, but then I'll, you know, spay, re, yeah, rest for a measure, and then I'll, I'll go back. And then you just it. rehearse it until you memorize it so you're ready for the tour. Well, I, I, yeah. I, I always have my charts with me in the rehearsal space because it's, it's just like, you know what, you is this a one bar turnaround, two bar turnaround? I can't remember. I can't remember. But if I got my charts, in you know what those crazy kids are doing now? They're putting them on those iPads. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. I, bought, <laughs> I bought an I bought an iPad Pro. Oh yeah, with the with the pencil, yeah, and I am yeah. so excited about yeah. it. Yeah, those kids are using those that crazy iPad. kids. I got to keep yeah. up with these kids. So hey, my producer Jim McCarthy is telling me we got to pay some bills. So we'll Let's be right back. The Rich Redmond Show. We'll be right back. Learn by doing, I definitely think, resonates with what we're about here at the School of Rock. I'm Angie McCright, and I'm the owner of the School of Rock in Franklin and Nashville. I would say that the majority of kids that come in have either been sitting in their bedrooms watching YouTube, learning how to play, or they've taken music lessons at some point in their life. We do have a lot of beginners. It doesn't matter what level you're at. You can participate in our programs, whether you're a beginner or you're advanced. We don't teach music to put on shows. We put on shows to teach music. Connect with School of Rock today. Search School of Rock Franklin or Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. Bills are paid, and we are back. <laughs> Got to pay them bills. Got to pay them bills. So, uh, Jim, you were curious about the film again. Yeah, you God's- know, one of the questions, you know, that really piqued my interest uh, when we brought up God's Not Dead, uh, it was it's a movie pretty much about what I'm into is apologetics yeah. in a way. Yeah. Uh, but the song, when it came to, you know, it came to you, in front of you guys, you guys weren't feeling it, you said. You know what? It was Probably because of the version of the song that I was hearing. Okay. It was so kind of removed from what we do. Right. The style of it. Yes. Okay. So you guys rocked it up. Was so it the message? Big time. It was, no, no, no. Okay. It wasn't the message at all because I thought, but I, it was just like, you know, when you hear demos, mm-hmm. you're like, yes. Or you're like, man, right. I don't know. This is Newsboys, man. Right. I don't, you know, because, you know, we, I think when Michael came on board 11 years ago, we really went after the art. What, what I mean by that is like, we realized that as a band, we kind of reached our limit. Just because you're in a band doesn't mean you're a great songwriter. Mm-hmm. It means we had had a lot of success in that, but we really wanted to push it. Okay, let's get the best songs because mm-hmm. ultimately it's about the fan. You guys get outside songs in that market? or Oh, do you, absolutely. Do you write oh, yeah. some as well? We do everything. Right. Because right? ultimately what we want is the best song. Because in Nashville, it, I mean, in the in the contemporary cr- the country market. Yep. It's that industry is so associated with getting the outside songs. Like so oh, so Al Dean is yeah. you know, he gets the best songs. And he's based his career on getting the best songs. So because same with you guys. That's what put butts in seats. Right. The fact that you wrote it, mm-hmm. the fans don't care. Yeah. Right. right? right. They don't really care. Yeah. But if you record the song and you're the first to record that, yes. it's your song. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much. Of course, anyone else can record it, but if you're the first, you get. But see, oh yeah. So we we chase the art. We chase the best songs we possibly could. And, and God's Not Dead was one of those that when I heard it, anyway, I'm like, "Where's I don't know, man. This is this ain't newsboys." He said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. I, I hear it. I hear it." And Wes has been a guy. Where's Campbell? He's been a guy that's been with us since day one. Yeah, mm-hmm. and which is awesome. Um, thousand percent trust. Um, if he says something nine and a half times out of ten, he's going to be right. He's just one of those guys. Now, is Wes your producer? He's our manager. Oh, he's your manager he's now. A- Have you had different producers over the years, or do you of stick course. to a? Of course, okay, gotcha. Yeah, of course. Um, Lincoln Brewster is what is, is Lincoln. He a, yeah. no, uh, Lincoln's a great guy. Yeah. I like Lincoln a lot. He doesn't he live out the West Coast or Phoenix or somewhere like. I can't remember where Lincoln. I just He's, every time you type in your guy's name, he come his name will come up yeah. on Spotify. Or, yeah, Lincoln's a great guy. Um, Steve Stevens is a guy we've used. I mean, you know, Steve Stevens is a great producer in town. Oh gosh, uh, Seth Mosley. Because mm-hmm. um, your music has got elements of rock. Pop. It's everything, man. Uh, I mean, we hip-hop. run the we run everything. the gamut over these. It's years. all in there. But I think because it's all kind of kinds of music that we can we, that we like. Right. So you'll hear this one song that's kind of you know really kind of floaty and artsy and ethereal. But then the next song will be like in your face rock and roll. It's like who mm-hmm. are these guys? Yeah. But it's not that we're trying to be something different than we're not. It's just because we've been around for a minute. We want to pull from all these different kind of areas because it's it's 
Look, good music is good music at the, end, at the end of the day. <laughs> to have a job since 1993, 26 years with the same guy, guys being paid so you're traveling with your best friends. And uh, you know what's, what's, I'm so jealous, is the idea that you're out in the audience, you're playing your drums, you're all strapped in, you've got a beautiful high energy yeah. show, nice yeah. production. You're looking out, everybody's wearing a Newsboys t-shirt yeah. and you're yeah. just like... Keep buying those t-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> that is, yeah, you know. Well, what's funny is, I look at someone like you, Rich, yeah. and I said, man, that guy gets to play on everyone else's records. Yeah. Yeah. He get, gets to play stadiums and arenas. The grass and, is which, always which, which, greener. Which, well, you guys are an arena band, right? Well, of course we are, yeah. but but, uh, but we don't play many stadiums, um, yeah. which uh, I know you have. Yeah. Uh, which is great. Which yeah. is, we we played a couple, of weird, but it's it's not to see newsboys. It's that we're part of some, another massive event. festival. Yeah, it must be yeah, something exactly. Yeah. So, uh, but we have played them, and I, I uh, the, the stadiums are an, an, another thing, Rich. Uh, um, They're overrated. Uh, well, <laughs> well, I will say this: um, you feel so disconnected from right. the crowd because they're so far mm-hmm. away, and but it's an awesome thing to be a part of. When you're up there, you feel so small. When you're mm-hmm. looking up in a stadium and it's just <laughs> packed with people, there's might be 40, 50, 60,000 people you're like, whoa. But the experience is not like playing in a pla- in a packed arena even. Right. A packed arena, there's so, so much energy coming back mm-hmm. at you. And there's we actually, people right there, yeah. there's people up there, there's people there. Even a packed theater, you get a 3,000. I love theaters. Uh, dude. I love the history Why? of them. We, we just played a bunch of theaters and, you know, some gorgeous theaters around this country. Yeah, because you can feel the history of like, wow, this place is probably haunted because probably. this <laughs> there probably was a jazz band in 1917 that well, you played know, right on this very with stage. just about every old theater we play, yeah. the, the custodians say, oh, yeah, and those places are There's things right? happening. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. like, you know, they, say they leave like, a little oh, light yeah. on for the yep. on the stage, you know, for the ghost. Yep, all that kind of, all that weird <laughs> stuff. Yeah, especially, you know, these the theaters that are 80, 100 years old. Um, yeah. It's just like, yeah, but they're gorgeous. Um, but yeah, you guys are an arena band, and like my band is always like, you know, we love arena. We have done so many for the last fifteen years amphitheaters where you're playing to eighteen to twenty four thousand people, and yeah. you're in West Palm, Florida, yes. or Tampa on July twentieth, and it's a hundred and ten <laughs> oh, on stage. We're like, bring us back yeah, to the arenas. Dude. It's air conditioned. Yeah. But can I tell? Duncan, that you're one of the first drummer, drummers that's got his own air conditioning system on his drum kit. Oh, I, my drum tech got this beautiful um, liquid-free air conditioning okay. unit. It doesn't need to drain. It did, goes down to 60 degrees, and he created all these pipes and tubing that go up through the drum riser, and they make my drum set, ar- the air around my drum set, 60 degrees. It's awesome. <laughs> we need to talk. I'll get I, you. <laughs> I said, I told John, I said, you need to bat in this thing, man. We need to talk. You just I, have I, big fans I have on big you? fans yeah, uh, yeah. because you know what it's like. If you're, look, we work so hard, especially in the summer. Yeah. Um, if your body's, you know, doing cardio and trying to keep cool. Yeah. You got nothing left, man. But if you if that whole keeping cool bit is taken out of the equation, I find I've got way more, more energy. energy, and that's what people, you know, my rest of my band gave me a hard time because I've got I got two of these massive fans. You say that, you try doing this, guys? Exactly. They're like, oh yeah, you wuss, you know, blah blah blah. So I said, okay, okay, well, you get up and do what I do. You, you know? say wuss. No, Boy, man, you show man, the check it out. <laughs> hey, so I tell you what, I'll, I'll show you how to um, read my charts. And you yeah. get me those guns. Yes, That's exactly. Right. How about that? <laughs> I appreciate it, Rich. You Thank know, you. You know, it'd be amazing. Um, and then you guys have done some really, really great stuff with your your notoriety. You have this thing called the Child Fund, yeah, where you it helps improve the lives of deprived children. And you yep. also do the God's Not Dead missions, yep. which is since 2004, you help build new homes in yeah. Tijuana. Yeah, dude. It's one of the most coolest things we do all year. Yeah. Um, I think... Much is given, much is expected, and I think we've been given so much. We're so blessed. We are. Rich, mm. uh, not only as drummers, uh, but as being in a successful bands. Um, you know, we've got so much. And and when I go down to, say, Mexico or anywhere in the world, yeah. uh, with Child Fund, with, with God's Not Dead Missions, dude, it's such a great reset for me because, you know, you know, we – live in beautiful houses, got beautiful cars, but, you know, my car gets three years old. I'm like looking at that new one going, oh man, I wish I, you know, <laughs> yeah, stupid, right? I know, stupid, these people stupid. don't have running water, you know. So when you go down there with either God's Not Dead Missions or Child Finder and you see how most people in the world live, it's like, yeah. oh, oh, we oh, got it good. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Well, I got nothing to complain exactly. about. Exactly, it's a good reset. It's a great reset for me. So we go down there uh, every year in the summer uh, down uh, Tijuana, 
And, and Rich, I'm telling you, these are people living in the dirt. They've got a smoldering fire in the corner, corrugated iron sides. I mean, these people are, you know, sewer water running down the middle of the street. Mm. I mean, it is brutal. So you guys get in there and you grab a hammer and you start building houses or well, how does it work? I mean, we absolutely do. We, we have a team down there now that um, they've got this kind of set formula to build these killer little houses. Yeah. I mean... They're on a concrete slab. They have electricity. They have windows. They have a locked door. I mean, it is. You might as well have given them a million dollars in the sense of. How do you determine who gets one? How does that work? It's just there's so many people that need them. It's just like picking a you know picking a name out of a hat kind of. But there's so much need down there, right. and I think for for us it it's it's just such a wonderful thing to be a part of. You know that you know that you can put into someone else's life and Rich it revolutionises their life I mean I've been on trips of child fund where we've gone down to these crazy countries and beautiful countries but I mean Africa dude Africa is another level. I have not been to Africa. I mean, it, it's it's worse than Mexico, and not all Mexico is bad. Me- I, we love Mexico. We go riding our dirt bikes down there every year down the Baja. And we mm. love the people and the food. And I need to and do that, dude. Yeah. It's, Rich, you need to come with us. Because I was just in San Diego. Yeah, it's just right well, across San the border. Diego, there, it's know? just right there, yeah. and we ride our motorcycles, and we and we, we don't do anything too crazy. Now we used to. Yeah. Um, but oh, we, when you say bikes, you're talking uh, motorcycles, dude. You ride motorbike? No, yeah. Rich, come on, dude. But I come like. On, okay. I want to have my, my career. Yeah. <laughs> I would be the I'm, guy going I'm, 20 miles an yeah, hour. Yeah, no, bike. come on, Rich. Come on, man. You get a little street bike, yeah. like a hog or a. No, nah, I'm not a Holly guy. You know, I'm, like I, a I, um, rice burner, crotch rocket. No, uh, <laughs> it's more of an enduro. So I got a GS <laughs> oh, 1200, which is imagine more of a bike that you'd you, on and off road. Yes, yeah. a bit of both. It's a dirt bike with turn signals. It, it's a yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but I got a GS 1200, which is a BMW, and uh, I, mm. I ride it around here. But down the Baja, I'll take like a you know. CR 450F or something like that yeah. down there. And uh, anyway, it's just such a wonderful experience. Food's great. People are great. It's like yeah. the same Mike uh, bike that uh, Neil Peart used to ride or still Ghost rides. Rider. Uh, yeah. Neil Peart, yeah. He has a, I think he has a BMW yeah. tw- a GS 1200. It, it, it's like a Dural bike. Yeah. I know exactly Speaking of Neil Peart, I, I, did a sh- I did a documentary with him uh, with DW. We, we did. Um, uh, uh, yeah. You played DW. Yeah, because we were both so, DW artists. I've been yeah, there since uh, 2010. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My man. I love DW. How drums. long you been there? Um, Long time, yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, I, I, probably not quite, maybe a little, little, maybe 2004, maybe 2004. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember. Yeah. Rich, Jim. Can we both play the Pro Mark Wood? Pro Mark, yes. Yeah. I'm a massive, love, love my Pro Mark drum sticks. I play naturals. Well, there um, and, the, and the wood they use is right here in Tennessee. It, it, which is awesome, that right? <laughs> uh, yeah, built in Texas, made uh, wood from Tennessee. Uh, love it, love Pro Mark, but, um, now I lost my train of thought, Rich. Oh, what were we uh, talking about? We were talking about, <laughs> talking about uh, motorbikes. 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 So, uh, and then, you know, of course, you know, and that's how we kind of found out about the Baja Missions was was riding down there. We saw this massive need. We thought, how can we be a part of this? We teamed with a guy called Baja Bob that was down there already. Mm. So he kind of had this 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 formula for building a house. Mm-hmm. They bring all the materials across from the States. They, they pre-pour the slab. So we just come in and 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 uh, you know we we build these houses. I think we next summer we're going down to build six houses. That's great. And uh, it, are, you, are you slinging hammers now? Oh yeah. You? Oh yeah. Slinging hammers as much as I can. I, Insurance you know, I premiums be, go up because yeah, of that? exactly. I mean, I mean, it, yeah. For the, for those three days, but it's but it's but it's great. It's it's great to get out of our comfort zone, mm-hmm. be a part of something greater than who we are right. on our own. And um, revolutionize people's lives. Yeah. I mean, it Beautiful. changes their whole world. That's got to feel good. You, it's that's, feels good. that's why I teach. I love. I mean, I love that of like saying like, look at this is the information that came to me by the sweat of my brow, and I want to give it to you. I want to yep. share it with you. Maybe yep. it'll impact and change your life in a way. Now, Jim is guys. If you guys are just listening, Jim is trying to send me messages on Messenger, but <laughs> I can't believe this, guys. But. I'm too young for this, but I'm squinting my eye. My left eye, it looks like I'm looking through spilt milk. I have a cataract on my left eye. I can't read it. I know. What does it say? Um, I'm actually very curious, and it's very topical these days. Um, Kanye, what's your take? Kanye? Kanye. Yeah. You mean he's always doing something. Did you know what he's been doing lately? No. He's become a believer, and he's got an album called Jesus Christ is King. Oh, good. So, like... He had a, he's been doing the church thing. I saw the documentary. Well, yeah. no, he was a guest on um, David Letterman's long form show, and they did they had footage of him. He has his own church or a church service on Sundays. But I'm just wondering. I haven't really dug into it. You know, maybe you know more about it than I do. You know what? 
I'm like, dude, if 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 that's what you're feeling, go for it, man. I I mean, I'm I I don't know Kanye. Um, mm. There, there was a rumour getting around a couple of months ago that Kanye was joining the Newsboys, which was really, really funny. <laughs> how did that rumour start? Um, I don't know how it all started, but it was got, it was on social media that we had people, you know, Texas, no way is Kanye joining. I'm like, and I didn't say anything because I thought it was funny. It's news to me. Yeah, really. But you know what? If, if, if Kanye has had a real, no, uh, if Kanye has had a real conversion, I'm like, dude, go for it. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know him. Um... Uh, I know he's a guy that uh, I, I don't really I, I don't know his music that that well, but I know, of course, I know who he yeah. is. Mm-hmm. Um, dude, I'm like, dude, that's awesome, yeah. right? Yeah, because you know when I listen to a lot of you know when you listen to a lot of contemporary Christian music, it's it is rock and roll. It's all dressed up, and so sometimes it, you, you don't even know it is it is a, maybe like a Jesus song. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's very interesting, um, you know that how that whole idiom kind of like came about i'm assuming that that you're a christian yeah right and that, that yeah, you're yeah yeah and that and so how does that how does that all factored into uh um life off the road and your marriage and kids yeah, and great, balance and all that question, because everybody that listens to my show knows that hey you know i tried marriage two times it doesn't yeah. mean i'm not a bad uh, i'm not a good guy I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm a good guy i yeah. just and i was yeah. a good husband it's just yeah. uh, this business is not for the faint of heart you're away from each yeah. other yeah. it's so tough yep yeah. How does you? How do you make it work? You know what? We get home every week, like yeah. we were talked about earlier. Yeah. We're never home. We're never away for for long periods of time, and um, I've got an awesome wife. Yeah, <laughs> that's I the mean, key, right? That I mean, she uh, she was meant for me in the sense of she's really strong and independent. Uh, she holds the fort down when I'm gone. I need that. Yes, I could not have a codependent wife. It just wouldn't work. Um, I, and I get married a little later in life too, so I kind of knew who I was. I think sometimes people marry for the wrong reasons. Maybe I don't know. I think people change. I think people it, uh, as they grow and they you know they age, they expect something different than maybe what they thought it was going to be. So, and no one's perfect. Um, just by the grace of God, Rich, that me, my, my, I'm still married. Really, I mean, yeah. at the end of the day. I ain't nothing special. I haven't got it figured out. I'm figuring it out every day just like everyone else. Yeah. I have a lot of friends that are divorced going through issues. Um, and that, like you said, it, they're not bad people. It's right. just they're having a l- tough time trying to work it out. And it's not for the faint of heart. You're right. Um, to be uh, to be linked with someone, to be married to someone, um, you got to push through some stuff mm-hmm. because you have two individuals trying to come together, trying to work it out. And... Uh, how did you crazy kids meet? Um, we met at First Tennessee Bank in Cool Springs. Oh, you make po- depositing a check. <laughs> exactly. I saw this girl behind. Um, she was the counter? S- behind she, the counter? She was behind the nice. counter. And I remember seeing her going, whoa. Good for you. You went right in. I was like, dude, this girl's amazing. But she was she was really tall and gorgeous. And I, saw, and I remember thinking, I thought, there's no way. Oh, it's girl, like a Nicole Kidman, Tom Cruise totally, height thing? Totally. Totally. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm probably about the height of Tom. And uh, she was, you know, five foot ten, and I'm like, whoa! I'm, I'm, I'm attracted to taller women. I always have been rich. It's the weirdest thing. Yeah. Maybe it's genetics. It's yeah. DNA thing. My DNA knows that it needs to get some height back in the gym, in the, in the Phillips gym pool. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, of course, there's some gorgeous shorter women too. But uh, uh, I, I just remember thinking, whoa, she's awesome. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I remember, I remember thinking, there's no way this girl go out with. There's no way she's going to go out with me. Anyway, so long and short of it, we end up going on the first date, and it was horrible because, uh, in really? the sense of, well, we didn't, we had no mutual point of contact. Like I didn't, I didn't know her friends. She didn't know my friends. Um, we, you know, usually when you go out with someone, you either work with them or you go to school with them or you go to the same church or there's that kind of commonality of sure. you have this point of connection. It was a blind date. Wow, we had no point of connection. We had to start off from zero, and the cool thing is, she didn't know. She didn't really know about the band, so which was awesome. That was good. Um, so it's always a nice gauge when they know nothing about. They that. know nothing about yeah. the band, so that was cool too. So yeah. it was just like this level playing field. We started off from zero, so the first date was tough. You know, we were both so nervous. But how did you get the sale of the first date? What did you ask? Um, actually, it was her, one of her girlfriends set it up. Oh, okay. Guys are pretty thick. 
when it right. comes to knowing what, what women want in general. Right. And you can quote me on that. <laughs> but we just don't tend to, like, I, like in high school, I never knew when a girl liked me. Then I went back to my 10 year reunion, you know, yeah, as you and they're do. like, you have no, I was so, I was so hot for you. I'm like, what? Why didn't you tell us? I just gave you all these signals, but you, you I'm like, I had no idea. Wow. Okay. I think I'm probably like that too. I, clueless, right? Yeah. Anyway, so I, you right. know, I thought that, I thought this girl was a girl was amazing. Anyway, her girlfriend said, "Oh, you need to call, you need to call Brian." She, you know, she's. I said, "There's no, I'm not calling." Not working out that she'd ask her girlfriend to ask me. Kind of, it was one of those situations, you know, not not cluing in at all. Anyway, of course, I found out later that. Uh, and then any, anyway, I was happy to be home. I said, "Man, I'm going to call it. I guess I. Oh, dude, I feel like such a chump just calling this girl out of the blue, not realizing she'd set it up. Anyway, we we end up talking on the phone for about an hour, hour and a half. I thought, man, this girl's amazing. It was the accent? Yeah. Well, maybe that was a part of it. Uh, and uh, yeah, right. And now you have children. Now we have three kids. Been married for tw- uh, it was ninety seven. What's that? Twenty five years? Is that twenty five? years? twenty two. Right, two. twenty-two it's, years. That's right. Yeah. Being man, being man, twenty-five, twenty-six years. Your kids? Are, any kids? Go, do they like music? Your kids? They all like it. Uh, none have really shown a propensity to play anything yeah. yet. Although my middle daughter does. She plays uh, kind of self-taught piano. She's actually very good. But uh, you know, I'm not going to push it, Rich. It's either there or it's not. Right. Um, I was never pushed. It was just there. You know, there was this. Mm-hmm. There was this passion for drums. That was just always there. Right. Uh, and if it ain't there, it's it's not there. So yeah, well, we started. You and I started playing around the same. I was yeah. six or seven. You were yeah. nine. Yeah, I was nine. Um, wow. Yeah. Looking back, Amazing. you accomplished so much. How many records? What's the body of work? Eighteen, nineteen. Re- That's studio incredible. Records. Yeah. 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 And how do you with nineteen records that a massive repertoire? Now we're talking like maybe two generations of fans, right? If not three. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. How do you put a set list together? Is it a ninety-minute show? It's impossible. Two-hour show. It, it, it's uh, we play for about. Uh, uh, what hour hour 20 mm-hmm. okay well we have we have support bands too so uh-huh. you know you have a couple of support bands you don't want to make the show too that's long that's tight 80 <laughs> minutes wow I, I think that I always thought that our 90 minutes was too short because we're we have number one songs we're leaving uh, yeah, out uh, yeah, I know I know well we are too uh, we've got about 30 Two thirty-four number ones wow. so there's no way we play about 22 24 songs, songs. yep um, then the drum solo and the, dr- and the drums. You gotta have and that. You gotta have that in. So, yeah, it, it, it's tough, Rich. Yeah. These are the guys in the band Jody Davis, Jeff Frankenstein. I know, I know. That's <laughs> so cool. He's a Frankenstein. He's a, he's a Frankenstein. He married the bride of Frankenstein, right? Oh, oh my oh. God. I, I, I was <laughs> <laughs> and then Michael Tate, Peter, and Phil Joel. Well, this- P- P- Peter and Phil Joel, they're, they're with us. They're back with us. And uh, Michael, for, Michael, yeah. Michael Tate, of course, from yeah. DC Talk fame. Wow. Um, it's uh, uh, Phil Joel and Peter Furler have come back with us over the last 18 months because what we're doing is we're kind of doing, we call it Newsboys United. So it's really, they're coming and playing all the old school classic newsboys tunes and then we so you're really kind of getting two ears it's like van going to see van and halen van and seeing yeah. sammy hagar and um that's really smart and, 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 and gary sharon david lee roth david lee roth <laughs> uh on, yeah. the, on the same bill that's so, really smart and some of the old stuff that was uh, recorded in the early 90s i'm assuming you have to give those a little facelift sonically you do, yeah. you do. Yeah. um but it's but you still want to kind of play them as people remember them too because yeah. that's – but, you know, you're talking generationally. We have two and three generations of families, and it's so cool, Rich. That's really You're cool. looking out there, and it's a family thing. Yeah. You're looking out there, and there's grandma, mum and dad, and, and 18-year-olds, 14-year-old, 12-year-old kids. Good job, man. So it's uh, it's changing it's people's wonderful, lives, man. Wonderful place And to you be. guys just celebrated uh, – I was reading on, on the website. It just said that um, – you guys have we're in, in October of 2018 celebrating 10 million sales. Yeah, I mean that that that's big for us. You know, uh, it's you know obviously not one record, but it's over the course of our career, and uh, which is big these days because people don't buy music <laughs> anymore, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's a whole other subject I don't want to get into. But mm-hmm. people don't buy 
buy music like they used to. So uh, the fact that we accomplish that is is awesome. That is very big. Yeah. And and uh, the the latest record is called United, yeah. and the single is called Greatness of Our God. Yeah. And it's the Greatness of Our God tour. Yeah. Yep. Going into next year. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, do you guys do some international touring? Yeah. We kind of we don't do a lot. Um, most of our obviously a, a majority of fan bases in the US. Um, but we do every 18 months we'll go over to Europe we'll go down to Aussie or Aussie go, yeah I know right I mean that's gotta be big for you guys right Brisbane, uh, Melbourne yeah Sydney. that's right you've been down yeah. there of course yeah, yeah. That's, where I, that's where I discovered the long black and oh, yeah, avocado and, toast oh avocado oh so good the bread down there oh my gosh the bread down there is so amazing Oh yes, I am. Um, I wrote three number one songs with an Australian Did you pop really? country band called the Wolf Brothers. I know. It's with an E, and they're they're big down there. They really are, and they come here and they write okay. songs. I'm yeah, uh, yeah cool okay. Guys. They're from Tasmania. Oh, Tasmania! Tasmania is its own country, yeah. man. It is so different than the rest of the country. It's very. That's where uh, they set the prisoners. They did. They sure did. Absolutely. Yeah. It was. It was a convict, uh, yeah. convict island, and but it's 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 beautiful down there. Um, they're a different breed down there. It's a different. It's a different place. Right. Like they're Con devils or something. Uh, I wouldn't say that. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. The Tasmanian okay, devil. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jim. You're right. cut off. That's four times in one episode. That, that's good. I like it. Good. Good stuff, Jim. Good stuff. Thank you. <laughs> Jim's well, embarrassing moment of the yeah. show. There we go. I just thought this, I think this is just such an enjoyable conversation and it's such a, just a pleasure to know you and have you in my home. And, and I think you're doing great things out there and, and you're a wonderful drummer. Thank you. And, I appreciate that. And I would, luck. I'd love to meet all the guys in the band sometime. Come see a show sometime. I'm going to look at that tour schedule. See if I can come. I invited you one time, Rich, and you blew me off. You, I know. You remember that? No way. Like, come on, Rich. I get, he totally blew me off. He said, really? nah, nah, I got What time. did you do? <laughs> that doesn't sound like me at all. <laughs> Why would no, you do you, that? Yeah, you could, I think you're out. You, you, yeah. were, you, you were very kind and said, man, I'd love to come, but I, I, I couldn't get there for, you, know, yeah. you might have been out. So. Yeah. Next time. You guys but, are doing yeah. Winter Jam, right? We did Winter Jam Last year. Uh, at the beginning of this year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is, that's awesome. Winter yeah. Jam, it's so much fun, 10 bands, and it's like a, it's like Lollapalooza in a sense. It's just a one day kind of one night festival and mm -hmm. it starts about three thirty, four o'clock and you have your, your, your lights up bands and they'll come and as people are coming in and then you, so we headlined that uh, this year. So we got to do about 44 dates across uh, arenas across the country. So. Do, you, do you get together with Lester Estelle and compare guns? Lester, man, that guy... That monster guy guns. is a monster. Yeah. I remember him back in his Pillar days when he used to yeah. play in a band called Pillar. And even back then, it's like, dude, who is this guy? Yeah, he's a beast of a drummer. He's a beast. And this is how small yeah. the world is. I just did a drum clinic and played with the percussion ensemble at Missouri Western University. And the 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 store that's, that sponsored my drum set and got me my drum set is Big Dudes Music in yeah. Kansas City. Yeah. And the guy that runs Big Dudes is a guy named Larry Maples and he used to work with Lester in Pillar and all the bands that he was in back in the day. In what way? I think he was uh, the manager or the road manager. Oh, or, and he, or he also... Um, got Lester his initial workout that he still uses to the day. See, Lester, he, he's a weight guy though, isn't he? he big weights. Yeah, he's yeah. all about big weights. I, I don't know. But how do you get those guns without doing what you, you know, do? Are you a push up guy? <sighs> Calisthenics? It, it's it's hit it, stuff. It's high intensity. High interval, intensity. Yeah. Interval training. I. Um, I like the hit. You know, it's, I got to brag on myself. I'll tell you this, and maybe I'm maybe I'm in go, the wrong. Go ahead. But Rich. I go to I go to Orange Theory. Oh yeah, Orange and, is great. And I always there's girls in there that are half my age, and I <laughs> and, and, and you're with I, them, right? I burn yep. twice the amount of calories. You know, the thing is that yep. I noticed about Rich is recently you had you were changing in between shows like here yeah and you had your your arms out and you you're sporting some. Guns. I think it was from the it's from the high intensity training. Yeah. Thanks, no, Jim. I was like, look I, at I Rich. Did, I did, yeah. Um, I did uh, Insanity for years. Um, yes. Backstage? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Dressing room? Boom. Absolutely. And that's what's so great. You have your laptop, you know, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, whatever it is. Um, the Sean T. Love Sean T. Yeah, the Sean T's, yeah. Uh, he has the uh, the micro insanity. It's just the 20 minute version. The, 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 the 20 minute, the T25, I T think, T20, something like that. And uh, But I did that for a long time. Um, I'm kind of looking for something new though, yeah. Rich. Uh, so if there's anyone out there that's got something that they could, kind of some kind of high intensity interval training that I could do. Um, but the beat, but, and you could be, so you, I think you could subscribe to beachbody.com. You probably can. And then you yeah. could use, yeah. do all the workouts. Yeah, which I need to do, but I'm, I'm kind of looking for something new. Yeah. Maybe yeah. collaborate with Bill Phillips on something, you know, Bill? I don't, I don't know Bill. He's a guy who did uh, Body, Body for, for Life. Life. Remember that? Body for, I do remember 2000. that. 2000. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, but I, I actually um, I actually did make contact with, or, 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 or through a mutual friend uh, of a brand new um, company called Flight, and they, they're they're a company that has uh, pre workout stuff, has uh, uh, kind of testosterone boosting stuff. That's good. All, all of but, that but kind of stuff. The thing is that a lot of those supplements are not they're not monitored by or approved by the FDA, so you don't know what the heck you're getting. Yeah, well, I trust him. Uh, I trust this gentleman, but yes. Give uh, me, t- let me know about the testosterone boosting stuff. I have not started using yeah. it yet, um, so I'm kind of excited to see how that, and, and I don't know how much of it, I, I really need to take some like blood work before and after. That yes, kind that's of a good idea. Just to see, okay, well, it did boost it or it did nothing. I don't know about you, but you know what those, the protein shakes, they bother me is the whey protein bugs me man yeah. the, the lactose mm, it, yeah. it gives you stuff yeah if i drink too much whey protein if i have one i'm good yeah if i drink more than one a day it does it does mess with me a little bit but i'm uh i do take brains chain aminos every day nice. um I'm, I'm really conscious of eating to feed my muscles rather than feed my belly in the sense of and, and you know just really as good a because you've got to you should never eat food for comfort if you yeah. want comfort get a blanket yeah you know what i'm saying don't or eat. drink water you don't live to eat you eat to live you do and i think as drummers we need to kind of realize especially as we get a little bit older that we need to we need to fuel the ferrari you know you don't put 87 in your ferrari you put 93 yeah. in your ferrari right <laughs> <laughs> i like that they quote me on that uh so i so think, much to learn about no, but well, well it just you know in fact what it is it comes down to discipline and yes Culturally, I'm fighting a little bit of an upbringing of where I had a mother that was like, Richie, I made your raviolis yeah, and yeah. your meatballs. So I yeah. like to, so when, I, when I'm going to go home yeah. for Christmas, I'm going to take my girlfriend, Karen, and she's going to meet my parents for the first time we've been dating for a year. She's going to be like, oh my God, Patty, you make all this homemade yeah, food and we're yeah, just going to do it. Yeah. And then just go to the gym. Well, you, you kind of fed mama. I you got to do it. You got to appease mama because mamas are the best. Yeah. They they do so much. There's is your mom still around? She is. Yeah, good. She's uh, she's an Aussie. She's an Aussie, wow. and she's eighty six. Wow, that's great. That's yeah. a long. So you come like, from a hearty stock. You know what? My both my grandparents lived to a hundred uh, on both sides. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe there's a bit of genetics in there. Yeah, maybe. man, you're and, gonna live you know, forever. So you be playing drums till you drop, uh, man. Well, that, that's what I said to my manager. He says, "Oh, when do you when do you when do you guys want to start slowing down?" I said, "Are you kidding me? I don't slow down." Yeah. I want to speed up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, I want to die on my drum kit. Not Hopefully I won't gross anyone out, but right. <laughs> I think when when you retire, that's when you start to die. Yeah, I agree. You know what I mean? Uh, and you, of course, are we going to, at 80, are we going to slow down? Of course we are, but yeah. mm-hmm. there's no real, I'm the Rolling Stones, look at those guys. Keep Champions, going. they're still going, they're still playing shows, still rocking stadiums around the world. Elton. Still look at Elton John. Um, Don't stop. It's the, one of the biggest tours of all time and he's on the books for another two and a half years. Which is awesome. That I see, really I love good. that spirit. I, and it's a lot of hard work. And, and he I, doesn't need the money. He just does it. It's, well, it, look, you don't need the money, Rich. I don't need the no. money. It's not about that. Right. You know what? It was never about that mm-hmm. for me. Right. It was about the love of playing drums. And to this day, now the fact that we've made money is awesome and sure. it's fantastic and we have a wonderful life, but that's not what gets me out of bed in the morning. Sure. The fact that I still get to connect with three generations of fans, we get to t- sing about our faith, we get to love on people. Um, it doesn't get much better than that in life for me as yeah. as a musician. It doesn't get much better than that. So that's beautiful. What's the best yeah. way for people to find you on the on this Instagram or ever? Well, yes, I am on the Instagram. Yeah, yeah. That, that's yeah. probably the best. You're you know active what? I, on I, there. I'm, I'm pretty active on Instagram, although I have kind of buttoned off a little bit lately because I was finding it was taking up, you know, you know, when you get those It'll notifications. It'll creep in, yeah. Oh, dude, five hours a day, six hours a day. I was like, this is ridiculous. Right. I, just, just too much. Yeah. So I, I've really ratcheted it off the last two or three months, but... I'll have a kind of rest time and then I'll kind of, you know, I'll ramp it up again. I love it. But uh, I think, you know, Instagram is Newsboys Drama on Instagram. Mm-hmm. I'm on Facebook, which I seldom go to Facebook anymore, Rich. Right. Interesting. I, I, I service Facebook via Instagram. There you go. So all the, you know, fans that are there, they can co- kind of get updated. But um, I find that a lot of our fans aren't even on Facebook. They're on then Snap or on TikTok. Or, I got or it. On, I got to do TikTok. I haven't done it yet, TikTok's guys. TikTok's a thing, man. You gotta get it's, in there. It's like the new Vine. Remember Vine? Yeah. 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 It's like the new Vine. We'll see so. if it'll last. What's that? We'll see if it'll last, you know, because some of these things come and go. It's generational. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, uh, I think 
Instagram's probably coming a little bit like Facebook in the sense to a lot of yep. the new fans. They, 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 ain't on, they ain't on Instagram. Everybody's on it now. Well, everyone's on it now. So mum and dad's on Insta now. So mm-hmm. it's like the kids don't want to be where mum and dad is. So they're on TikTok, TikTok now. So. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, and Snap, of course. I, I, I've got a Snap account. I've got a TikTok account. But there's only so much. Snap and TikTok. Write that down. So we got we to we get in the I'm, game. Right, yeah. right. What did you learn? I learned that there is there is a calling in life that the, the the drummer has that we have this thing where we are called to play this instrument and as a result of playing that instrument it takes us around the world and yep. it allows us to realize our dreams yep. but while we're really realizing our dreams we're able to highly impact yeah, several generations of people, and I think that is a um, that is a great gift and a cool way to spend your time on Earth. Well, it's an honor. Yeah, it, it, you it know, really not is. many people get to do what we do, Rich. And and uh, I think back in the early days, I might have taken it a bit for granted. Sure, but um, as you live a bit of life and you realize that. When I go and eat at a restaurant downtown Nashville, there's probably a player that's could be probably better than me at right. what they do, but they're serving my dinner yeah. that I get to rock arenas. So, and, yeah. and, and I don't see that pridefully. I say that as like... It's reality. Thank you, Jesus. Mm-hmm. And thank you. Literally. Uh, seriously. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because I, I, you know, are there better players? Absolutely there are. Sure, um, all the time. But here's another side to touring, Rich. And I know you've experienced this. Being on the road and a touring band is not all about your talent. Is can I hang with the guy right. for the other twenty two hours of the day? Well, people have been doing that with you for twenty six years, so well, you're golden. You, well, well, hopefully, right? Yeah, I could still get fired, I guess, but uh, with the other guys getting up, up on me, please don't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's a that's another whole side. There's a touring musician that we don't touch. It's like, is the guy amazing? Yeah, he's a great player, great player, but. I, I can't live with this guy. Right. He's got to go. Right. Yeah. So I would rather have a guy that's not quite as good but is an awesome hang than have a guy that's brilliant because it just takes one guy in, in, in that group. To spoil the chemistry. To, yeah. The cancer. Abs- yeah. And it's you, – Rich, you've been, you've been in situations like that. I've been in situations like that. So there's so much more to being a touring musician than just can you play – are you good enough to play the gig? Right. Is, is are you a guy that's going to be able to get on with the rest of the band? Beautiful. And, and mm-hmm. uh, that's a whole nother interview right there. I love that. What did you learn, Jim? Just now, just amazing how much culture plays into everything. You know, just being able to show – whether it's a business, whether it's a band – all that stuff, culture. It matters, man. It matters big time. It matters, yep. You know, uh, Vaynerchuk talks about, you know, hiring for in- emotional intelligence over skills. He's like, skills are a dime a dozen. Yep. You know, it's can this person, you know, have the emotional IQ to really endure what this business is? Yep. And that's exactly what it's you're talking about. And, and it's not for everyone. No, it's not. You know, I've seen guys come out on the road and they just, they just cannot. They just can't handle it. No. You know? yeah. they, I have friends that I went to college with that really quickly, right away, they got their first tour, they got their dream tour. They went out and they said, wow, I do not like yeah. traveling. Yeah. And they said, yeah. I am going to set up my home studio here in yeah. Los Angeles yeah. and yeah. I am going to find clients and I am not going to travel. But I was like, you know what? I like it. Yeah. I, you know, I like. I love it. When I was on the air the first time with radio, yeah. doing music radio. I thought Jim's I wanted a, a radio background, you know, but mainly my, my teeth were cut in the production room doing voiceover and stuff. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed that much more than being on the air. I thought getting into it, I'd want to be sure. on the air, Yeah, but back selling classic rock albums was not exactly my thing. This kind of thing, personality driven type shows are more my thing, but right. you know, that's, Give us I, an I, example of uh, back-selling a Pink Floyd song. Oh, my gosh. Uh, let's see. Uh, if I were to revert back to the home of rock and roll I-95 in those days, you know, you're coming out of a Pink, which, which Pink Floyd, money. Money. The home of rock and roll I-95 on Brookfield Danbury's rock and roll home, I guess you would say. That was, <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while, Rich. Uh, that was Pink Floyd, money, on their latest album. Stay tuned. We got the weather coming up next. <laughs> On that latest yeah. album, da, yeah, da, 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 it's da, like da, da, it's da, like da, wearing da, an old da, pair of da, shoes. Da, da. I is. love money too because it had that really odd, you know, seven, odd seven, seven, four, se, seven, seven, eight. Se, right. It was seven, eight. Seven, seven four, four, five, six, seven, one. That's it. Five, six, seven, one. Seven.
Yeah, Sav one. Yeah, that was that was a that was a fun one. When I was a kid trying to get wrap my brain around that. Oh as my a kid, god, you know. This was so enjoyable. Thank you yeah, so much man. for coming, man. Absolutely. Really, really great, great way to spend Absolutely. the uh, spend the morning so here at fun. Crash Studio. Guys, be sure to check out newsboys.com. Follow Duncan on the Instagram. Newsboys and ch- Drummer. Yeah, yeah. Newsboys, Newsboys Drummer on Instagram. Duncan and, Phillips uh, on Twitter. Duncan Phillips on Twitter. And go. then be sure to see the band on their Greatness of Our God tour going into next July. Jim, as always, thank you for everything you bring to the show. That's we right, love you. And thanks to our friends at School of Rock. Check out schoolofrock.com. If you're interested in signing your kids up for School of Rock and getting them to play a musical instrument and coming out with a higher self-esteem, email them, Nashville at schoolofrock.com or franklin at schoolofrock.com. And as always, we appreciate you subscribing, sharing, rating, and reviewing. Tell a friend we appreciate it. See you next time. This has been the Rich Redmond Show. Subscribe, rate, and follow along at richredmond.com forward slash podcasts.